So, Julie, we have a podcast. We have a podcast. Oh, I'm so excited. Guys, last time we checked, I had we had like 150 downloads on our first episode. It's big. So thank you. You thank guys you. are great. Thank you all so much, early adopters, especially our patrons on Patreon. This podcast is no longer costing me money every time thank we God. make an episode. <laughs> so thank you heartily. You're covering our alcohol content, and it's the best. You're not quite covering our booze every time, but you are covering hosting fees. So that's a great start. We're and getting there. We have some awesome behind the scenes content. Anyway, we'll tell you all about it at the end of the episode. Today, we have one of my favorite episodes so far. <laughs> Hint, there are only two. About <laughs> what, Jules? Selkies and Kelpies. That's not just an 80s band name. Is that an 80s band name? I don't know. Hollow Notes, Selkies and Kelpies. That's not even remotely close, but <laughs> and it's okay. It's not even the 80s. Guys, I'm not even drinking yet. Anyway, uh, it's super fun. There's a sexy water monster, there's a scary water monster, there's almost Swedish lesbians. So close to Swedish lesbians. There's failures of sixth century Scottish farm childcare. And you really have to stick around because Amanda's verbal emojis this time are to <laughs> die for. If I may say so myself. <laughs> so hope you enjoyed this episode and let us know what you think on Twitter. Thanks. So today we're going to talk about elemental spirits, but like a specific kind of elemental spirit. So element like Avatar, like Earth, Wind, and Fire. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Like Last Airbender, Legend of Korra kind of thing. Okay. Elemental spirits kind of exist in every culture. They're spirits that like represent trees and rocks and rivers and oceans and stuff like that because everything needs to be explained in mythology. Yeah, it makes everything sense. That's- elements are... Uh, elemental, right? They're a fundamental part of every culture. They're ubiquitous. God, that was such a bad pun. All right. (laughs) It's not a pun. It's a description. So talking about like kind of Celtic, Irish, Scottish mythology, there's two water spirits that I kind of want to talk about that are like kind of related, but also like super, super different. Uh, So do you kind of want to start with like the cute, sexy kind or like the malicious rip your throat out kind? First of all, I'm really excited that this sort of shows the two sides of the sea, right? The sea can be a bounty, life-giving, you know, you earn your living as a fisherman, or it can like eat your sons and nephews and husbands. And and drown everyone. Exactly. Drown everybody, have tempests, have sea creatures from the deep that we're still uncovering. Um, So why don't we start with the friendly sea, and then we'll get into uh, unleashing the crack. All right, so house wrecking sea mammals first. Gotcha. (laughs) Let's do it. All right, so we're first going to talk about Selkies, and Selkies is basically a Scottish mythology, though it's kind of spread into other places. Right. Uh, It comes from the Scottish word Selk, which means seal, which is going to kind of give away what, like, (laughs) <laughs> its abilities are. Interesting. Uh, but Selkies are basically like water spirits who live their lives as seals in the uh, the seas and oceans. Right. Uh, they're pretty much like happy-go-lucky kind of creatures because like they're seals. Like, So how do I differ from a regular seal? They have... Well... Oh. Getting there? So seals, they're pretty ordinary because like, you know, they're seals. But then Selkies are super interesting because once in a while they'll come to shore, shed their skin, and take human form. <gasps> interesting. Yeah. So like a little mermaid, but really committing. Really, really committing. Really committing. Like, <laughs> just Not like, half and half, either or. So like if you're just like walking down a, uh, down a beach in Scotland and you see like a naked person, probably a Selkie or oh, a crazy person. Or a drunkard. I mean like one or the other, really. Yeah. So now like what do these Selkies do when they're on shore and they look like humans? They uh, seduce people or steal children. They fuck. Oh. Yes. So Selkies are always described as having some sort of like seductive power over humans. Uh, And the cool part is, is like they're kind of, there's male Selkies and there's female Selkies. A lot of times when you're looking at like ocean spirits, it's like they're always like the seductress woman, like ruining people's lives and stuff like that. Yeah. 
That's so, interesting. Yeah, I don't, you don't hear much about uh, dual gender, you know, or two genders of the same kind of spirit. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And actually, most stories that you see, like the original Selkie stories, they're usually male. Huh. And I'll talk about kind of like why that is later on. I'm excited. Like, so male Selkies usually like seek out women who are like super dissatisfied with their lives, like women whose husbands are like away fishing or at war, like <laughs> oh, join my. the Navy, like husband hasn't been home in a while, wow. like that kind of thing. Like they're horny and they're down for it. <laughs> um, so in these stories, like women have, it has to, the way that they can summon a Selkie is they have to shed seven tears into the ocean and then the Selkie like emerges out of it. Kind oh of my like, God. that's a very reliable booty call. Yeah. Like, no, it's like better than like Netflix and chill. It's just like seven <laughs> tears and we're good. Instead <laughs> of your seven digits, you just got to put seven tears. Exactly. Uh, so then the Selkie comes to shore and like takes her to bed. And a lot of these stories are like probably just like, explanations for like women cheating on their husbands with oh, the sure. butcher or the milkman or whatever and then like getting pre- pregnant and blaming on selkie wow yeah because who wants to cop you know if there's five men left in the village everyone else is at sea <laughs> who wants to cop be to like that if you were like, be like it wasn't you know what the it was butcher it, it was, was the selkie. seal <laughs> Exactly. You like see that guy, like the little head bobbing out of the water over there. That was the dude that fucked me. Interesting. I wonder why they they are seals and not just like sea people who come ashore. Because like you know you can explain where like this dude that came and fucked your wife disappeared to. It's because he like re put on his skin and like went back into the ocean to be a selkie. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, so like female selkies are usually just like going about their business and then have some douchey fishermen like steal their pelt when when they're in human form. And the pelt is like super important in selkie culture oh, sure. because if the selkie doesn't have their pelt, they can't return to the ocean as a seal. That's um, fascinating. Yeah. So basically, like, this Selkie is under a guy's power and forced to marry him if he keeps her pelt. Wow. Yeah. So they become his bitch, and if the Selkie finds her pelt, she's able to, like, leave in a heartbeat. Like, there's no, like, weird Beauty and the Beast Stockholm Syndrome going oh, on Oh, right, there. yeah. She, she yeah. gets the key and she's out she's of there. She's, like, out of there. That's like, a very interesting kind of allusion to virginity, mm-hmm. right? That, like, if you, you know, if you take the, the mantle, as it were, mm-hmm. um, then, you know, the woman has to be yours. Right. But nah, she, she can just bounce if she gets it back. That's great. What fantasy book series was it that... You have to like craft the animal skin, and that sort of envelope allows you to turn into that animal. I thought it was Harry Potter initially, but it's not. Adam and I are just like, no. you know, willpower. I, and I was thinking like animorphs, but that's not it either. No, no, it's like a, it's, uh, it's very okay. I'll think about it. It's like it's like hours and hours of spell craft that you use to create the like skin, the skin of an animal. If anyone knows, please like message us and let us know because that please would do. be great. Because we are drawing a blank right now. So occasionally we see stories about vengeful selkies. Like if you look back into Scottish mythology, that's just like a thing that happens. Right. So like in one story, a selkie wife escapes her husband after getting her um, pelt back. Her pelt back, uh, and then she return uh who like the husband the human husband like comes and he's like super mad that she left so he kills her selkie husband and children oh my so, so this is okay so what's happening okay so human woman no no, no. selkie selkie woman right leaves her human husband human husband super mad oh so comes human- and kills oh. her selkie husband oh, so selkie and selkie partner. children oh, oh no! yeah so, so like, sad. so like, murdered a bunch of seals because he was mad his wife left. Whoa! Yeah, so this, that really happened. That he killed a bunch of seals. Yeah, thinking that they were selkies. Yeah. Wow. And so, as revenge, as the story goes, the uh, lady selkie drowns and pushes from the cliffs to their death all the men on the island that they lived <gasps> on. So like homicide, yeah. patricide, so much. Kill, like all the men. Kill all the men. Hashtag misandry. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, so, like, some, whatever, 5th, 6th century Scottish misandry. Right. So, like, I mean, the Selkies are, like, pretty chill people, but, like, until you start, like, killing off their children, like, of course, probably yeah. not the best situation that you could have been They're in. Selkie families. Yeah, exactly. Why would you kill the Selkie babies? I don't, I don't want to think too hard it's about like, it. Let's move on. Let's it's move like on. clubbing the seals. It's terrible. We oh, don't want to talk about no, it. Oh, no, no. Um, so, the Selkies 
are uh, not exclusive to Scottish mythology. There's similar uh, spirits that are in certain cultures, and I kind of yeah. wanted to just touch on that well, a little bit. Well, it a bit like a siren, right? So, a little I mean, bit. But the sirens don't shapeshift. Oh, like, the shapeshifting yeah. aspect is, like, super important to the Selkies because it allows the them to The seduction is very interesting. You don't yeah. think of seals as being a seductive kind of animal. <laughs> I mean, but... no one goes sexy seal, my yeah. friend. Sexy but, I mean, when seal. you think about it, the, the sea, you know, it, it gives, as I said earlier, mm-hmm. you know, it's fertile. It gives you food and mm-hmm. living and, you right. know, joy, I guess, if you look at it. Yeah. But it's also, it's unpredictable, it's tempestuous, it's, um, you know, it can it can kill people. And I mean, there's a lot of stories, like, in mythology that are related to, like, the sea and, like, having babies and fertilization. Like, if you sure. look at the story of Aphrodite, she's born out of the waves and mm. semen. Like, that's just a thing that happens. <laughs> Lol. Um, so, there's a bunch of different other seal shapeshifters. Uh, in Swedish les- uh, legends, there's a seal shapeshifter. It's like Swedish lesbians, tell me more. <laughs> Swedish lesbian <laughs> seals. That um, would be great. And then a Native American uh, tribe in, like, the Washington, Oregon area, area also had, uh, like, a seal shapeshifter. Really? So, yeah. That's very cool. So, while the Selkies are, like, pretty benevolent, besides that, like, scary revenge story where we come all the men. Yes. Um, there is a... Right, they just come ashore, have sex, whatever, go back to their exactly. seal form. Very chill. Unfortunately, there's another Scottish uh, water spirit that is also known for shape-shifting and kind of inhabits, like, locks and pools of Scotland. Cool. But super, super different. <gasps> I'm um, so this... So now we're on to the ragey part. The ragey part. Now that we've talked about killing all the men, we're gonna do a, uh, a spirit that kind of doesn't care who you are we're just gonna kill everyone great um so we're gonna talk about kelpies <gasps> kelpies kelpies selkies and kelpies selkies and kelpies the uh scottish apparently like things that end with ease <laughs> uh the salt and pepper shakers of scottish water <laughs> yes pretty much <laughs> <laughs> um so kelpies kind of take the form of humans but they're notably described as taking the shape of a horse and for anyone who is wondering, Amanda was like the horse girl when we were growing up. Yeah, like, that's she was true. The I did. like I go rode to horses. everyone, but like I mean, when you're in school, there's always like that one girl who is like the horse girl. I don't, I don't know if I want to accept that mantle. <laughs> Damn. Okay. I didn't have like horse horse apparel. Yes, I just rode horses. Okay. She was a horse girl, but okay. All right, we can revisit this at a later time. <laughs> All right. Um, so the name Kelby comes from the Gaelic word. Calipeach, with either me, which either means heifer or colt, depending on what translation oh, so you're looking a, at. A cow or a baby horse, right? But like, usually horse. Interesting. Um, so, almost every notable Scottish uh, body of water has a kelpie uh, kelpie story associated with it. Cool. And we're going to talk about why in a little bit because it kind of makes sense when you think about it. So kelpies can be either horses or humans. Yes, not both. Yes. Well, cool. I mean, like it those can are the two forms they can take. Right. It can take those two forms. Got it. Um, so in stories, uh, it is described as a powerful and beautiful dark, uh, black horse, which inhabits the deep pools of rivers and streams and like basically any other form of water. That sounds very beautiful coming out of the, coming out of the, uh, the dark locks. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, (laughs) the way you can distinguish it from whether or not it's a real horse is like, besides the fact that it's like constantly dripping with water because it just Uh, came out of the water, um, is the fact that the hooves in horse form are reversed compared to a normal, normal (gasps) horse. So it's quite ominous for some reason. No, it's kind of like weird, um, club footed horse. Right. It's sort of like a weird kind of, uh, almost i want to say like almost like christianity satanic image oh sure yeah Yeah, because like you think of like the cloven hooves of the of course yeah and horns kind of go back like i i definitely mm-hmm. get it so um the kelpie is uh sort of interesting in the way that it claims its victims okay because we as we talked so about kelpies are just demonic or they're just like a creature you know that like just has to fill its needs and like no stuff. it's like pretty demonic okay like it's it's not a good thing there's no like oh it's just like trying to eat it's right. like nah, oh, no it's, okay and we'll see why so Got kelpies it. um the victims of kelpies are usually children terrible yes so they'll see just it- going for the worst possible oh, absolutely audience yeah. for your eating <laughs> so kelpies like they'll just hang out on shores and stuff like that and like In their children- worst form in their horse form. Yeah. Uh, and children will, like, see it. They'll be like, oh, my God, a horse. Because, you know, children love horses. That's sure. Just and they can be on a beach. Yeah. You want to go pet it? Yeah. Uh, so when they go to pet it or ride it, they stick to the pelt of the kelp. <gasps> oh, no. It's like glue. It's like they just, like. like a fly trap. Oh, yeah. it's really. 
right. So uh, the Kelpie then drags the children into the water, <gasps> drowns them, oh, no. devours them, ah. and then leaves the entrails at the water's edge. <gasps> That's horrifying. Yeah, it's really bad. So you see your child run off to go pet the nice little horse standing there, or maybe you don't. You you can't supervise your child. You're a farmer in Scotland <laughs> in the early first se- first millennium. Yes, you can't supervise your children. So you're toiling away at your. There's no potatoes yet because it hasn't been domesticated. Uh, so you're toiling away wheat. at your wheat barley? farm or your sure. barley farm, and so your children leave, and then there's just a pile of entrails on the beach. Yes. That's horrible. Yeah. It's that's, real bad. That's quite smart, though, mm-hmm. because the, the Kelpie doesn't have to, like, doesn't have to have any, you know, uh, teeth or, like, terrible predatory whatever. Just sticky. Go back to where your home is. And, nom, oh, nom, your nom, prey nom, is nom. suddenly ready to eat. <laughs> Pretty much. Wow. Um, so there's a couple of stories where, like, children were ma- uh, able to, like, manage to survive a Kelpie sure. thing because they'll just, like, you know cut off their hands or finger before the Kelpie can drag them into the water. Uh, so, like, you know, there's really... It's like, you either maim yourself or, like, die a watery death. So what's the lesson here? Like, don't embrace pleasure? <laughs> like, don't don't go pet cute things? We'll talk about it in a little bit. It's like the ultimate hand in the cookie jar thing, yes. right? Only said to your mom, hitting your hand with a spatula, mm. you get eaten by a Kelpie. Well, so basically the origin story is Kelpies most likely came out of, like, the uh, idea of, like, human sacrifices with, like, the entrails on the shore and oh, stuff yeah, like that. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, and it was usually to, Just like... Just into bogs and bodies of water. Right. Yeah. It was to appease water gods. We yeah. would sacrifice, like, a virgin or a child or something like that in order to, like, make sure the river or lock didn't flood that season. Sure, like, that it continues sort of to thing. give you a bounty. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so the horse form was usually associated with, like, horse sacrifices in the area as well. So it could have been a sure. child, it could have been a horse. It really could have gone either way. Yeah, um, a, a prized yeah. possession, right? So, um, in these, for the record, we we don't condone child or horse sacrifice. No, not in cool. a historical lens, we understand how people once, under, you know, thought this I mean, was important. You do you, but not anymore. <laughs> um, you did you, but not anymore. You <laughs> <We> did them. <laughs> um, so, um, in the stories, children are the victims, also as like a way to warn children about perilous areas of water, and to warn, as we'll talk about in a little bit warn women about being wary of strangers. Oh. So, like, this is the early, like, go to the bathroom in pairs so someone doesn't, yeah. like, mug you or rape you. Yeah. That kind of thing. Wow. So, that's the Kelpie's horse form. We're going to talk a little bit about the human form right now, too. Cool. Uh, in their human form, they can usually, like, betray their nature by, like, one, they're soaking wet, and, like, two, there's seaweed in their hair. Like, that's, like, you're just like, hmm, that dude has seaweed in her, his hair. That seems a little bit weird. Right. That woman's walking around wintry Scotland wet. <laughs> Completely <laughs> soaked through. So, male or female humans or either? Um, usually male in these situations. A lot of, like, later art shows them as female, but there's not a lot of, like, actual stories that her, have survived where the Kelpie is female. Yeah. Which but is interesting. Painters like to paint just, like, women's cascading hair looking sad Over nipples. the distance, yeah. right? <laughs> Basically. So Kelpies are usually described as male, so they overpower people who are passing by, like, bodies of water. Usually they'll, like, jump up on bridges, and then someone walking by by themselves will just, like, grab them and drown them. Oh. Yeah. Kind so of like usually women, too. Bridge troll. Yeah. Right. Bridge troll, but, like... Not like, answer these riddles and I'll let you cross my bridge. <laughs> answer me these questions three. <laughs> it's more like, it's more like, oh, you're walking by yourself at night. Here, I'm going to grab you and drown you. Like a human slash Kelpie Venus flytrap. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, and they don't really have the stickiness associated with them in the uh, human form. And like they just do. grab them. Right. It's yeah. just like, here, bear hug you from behind and now I'm going to jump off this bridge and oh, wow. eat you in the water. That's very ominous, sort of like, you know, suicide you know, kind of connotations mm-hmm. and whatnot. Oh, absolutely. Someone yeah. could totally be like, oh, a Kelpie drowned them when they really just, like, jumped yeah. off a bridge. wow. Um, so one of the ways to kill a Kelpie is to shoot it with a silver bullet because oh. everything in every mythology dies with a silver bullet. <laughs> if you There's a bit of a kind of sacrificial element to that as well. Like, like it's sacrificing. Special, right, like, specially powerful. You have to kill it with a, a special object. According to capitalism, only rich people can kill monsters. <laughs> <laughs> capitalism wasn't around back then. Oh, yeah, it was. Adam Smith was only a, a twinkle in the eye of the universe. Um, and when the Kelpie is shot with the silver bullet, I think this is really fun, uh, it turns into... Pile of seaweed? It turns into, I quote, turf and a sm- soft mass like jellyfish. <gasps> 
Interesting. Yeah. So like a like a soiled jello. Yes. Wow. Like a soiled seaweedy jello. Like soil, like an yeah. earth jello. Yes. Well like <laughs> no, no, like a like Or like I think seaweed. they mean like like mossy kinda like Ooh. Yeah. That sounds like modern art. <laughs> <laughs> It sounds like a weird, like, sculpture that someone did to, like, reconnect with nature. Yeah. Um, the true soul of man. <laughs> we care about art, to be clear. Oh, God. I don't care about art uh, that uh, deeply <laughs> or intelligently. I kind of do. <laughs> um, so one of the most well-known Kelpies, one would argue, is Loch Ness. Mm. So there have been Kelpie stories related to Loch Ness since the 6th century. Wow. And if anyone ever read um, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, the um, Harry Potter spinoff book that uh, J.K. Rowling put out. Like in 2000, I think, something like that. Down there. Um, If you read the article that she writes about Kelpies, they mention the fact that um, the Loch Ness Monster is actually a Kelpie, but because it's a shapeshifter, like, it shapeshifts, like, either into that giant sea monster that we associate with it. Right, I was going to say, it looks more like a snake in in a lot of, Mm -hmm. uh, or water snake, eel, plesiosaurus, or whatever. (laughs) Something like that. (laughs) Reptilian. Yes. Um, And then J.K. Rowling makes the joke that every time that muggles try and look for it, it just transforms into an otter. (laughs) (laughs) which I think is a great, great joke. Like, I just, I remember looking up Kelpies and being like, oh my god, it's like the otter in Loch Ness. Amazing. Um, So a lot of what the Kelpies kind of are associated with is that rationalization of, like, drowning of children and adults who accidentally fell into a deep or turbulent water, or like you said, probably, like, suicide and trying to account for that. Yeah. I mean, that's a big part of it, right? Mm -hmm. From, from what we're getting out of, um, the lessons you've given me so far is that (laughs) mythology, a big part of it is to explain the inexplicable and every, I can't speak about Scotland, but every Irish person has a cousin or uncle who died of drowning. I don't know. I mean, wells. It's not like there's more water there. It's not like there's more water. We're not talking about like the land of a thousand lakes here. But every single Irish person, it's I'm laughing because it's tragic. Because has has someone who died by drowning, and you know, especially back in the day, you know, can't supervise your kids. Not everyone learned how to swim necessarily. So, just you know, part of uh, farm life is being trampled or or falling or or drowning. Well, I don't have trampling stories, but I certainly do have drowning stories. Uh, so because water is such a mysterious force in any kind of culture, sure. we do try to explain that force. Uh, it has the ability to kill or to bring life and human beings kind of come up with stories, uh, and spirits that give reasons behind those things that we're too afraid to explain. Yeah. Water has always been sort of a mysterious force in any culture. Uh, it's used to explain when we create mythology in order to explain that force that it has on us, the ability to kill, the ability to bring life. Yeah. Uh, and then human beings come up with stories and spirits to give reason behind those things that we're too afraid to explain. Uh, so it could be something good, like sexy seals bringing children and awesome wives, or it could be really bad, like drowning and devouring small children and women. Right. Uh, they explain local tragedies for people who believe in them, and that's kind of the importance of mythology. Right. It's something you can tell yourselves other than, you know, life is hard and, and then it ends. Um, it's a way to talk to other people to explain things that uh, you wish you didn't have to. That was a very somber ending to this episode, but I'm just going to drink my drink. <laughs> Spirits was created by Julia Shafini and me, Amanda McLaughlin. It's edited by Eric Schneider with music by Kevin McLeod. Allison Wakeman designed our beautiful logo and Twitter banner. <laughs> Subscribe to Spirits for your preferred podcast app to make sure you never miss an episode. Our website is spiritspodcast.com and you can find us at Spirits Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, SoundCloud, and Instagram. On our Patreon page, patreon.com slash spiritspodcast, you can sign up for exclusive content like behind the scenes photos, audio extras, director's commentary on the episode's blooper reels, and beautiful recipe cards so you too can make salty dogs at home. We are so thankful for those of you who signed up to support us already. Every little bit helps as we get our first season off the ground. 
If you like the show, please share it with your friends. It really does make a difference and leave us a review on iTunes. It'd be great to make the up and coming chart. We're listed in the history section rather than the comedy section. So what I'm saying is we could definitely take over those charts. I think we're a lot more fun than BBC's In Our Time, which is great. Which is great, but suck it in our time. Much less boozy. Anyway, uh, I hope so. Thank you so much for listening. Till next time.